on turning points of the Second World War. Um, this is part of the British national narrative. Uh, it, there's words and phrases in this class which express something profound about the British character, uh, the mainly English character, really. Britishness is not the same as Englishness. English are an ethnic group who live mainly in the east of the island. I don't want to talk about that now. I want to talk about this is kind of English British kind of like, how can I put it, sacredness in a way. When you talk about Dunkirk spirit, what they mean is patriotic selfishness, sorry, selflessness, not selfishness, and cheerfulness. The willingness to, to do your best for your country uh, on a spontaneous moment. Churchill asked the uh, boat owners of uh, the uh, southwest part of um, England to get over to Dunkirk to evacuate the men off the beach. You see, they couldn't get to the destroyers, you see, so they needed smaller boats to ferry the boys onto the, onto the ships. Meanwhile, they've been attacked by the uh, German Air Force. I don't know how bad the attacks were, but by all accounts, it was pretty hellish. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Hitler did hold back from using tanks against the troops at Dunkirk. And people have oft often postulated why this was the case. Basically, Hitler wanted to do a deal with the United Kingdom. Hitler, but Churchill was not going to do a deal with that evil man, you know? Mm. But having said that, you know, Hitler could have crushed the troops on Dunkirk, you know? Because he had, the, he had them surrounded with tanks, you know? So, the soldiers, 250,000 British soldiers were evacuated, and about, I think, about 500,000 French. The French held the, re held the perimeter, while the British were allowed to get away. And that's a heroic sort of, st heroic, a heroic tale that the, even, maybe even the French people don't know about. Okay, the soldiers were on the beach, and it was, from what I can gather, from what I've seen, it was pretty, de pretty desperate and terrible times, you know. They'd left most of their equipment here, because they went into Belgium and, and tried to stop the Germans from attacking France and Belgium. But it was no good because the Germans used Blitzkrieg, which was called... This is uh, Blitzkrieg. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is Blitzkrieg? Here. This is German. This means lightning war. They used paratroopers. They used super fast tanks. And they just went in straight away. No one could do anything about it, you know? They went round defensive forts and defensive lines. Before you knew it, the British were surrounded and they needed to get away quickly. So the Royal Navy, which is the British Navy, sent loads of destroyers in the area and they were slowly evacuated over about four days. And under that time, they were attacked, um, but not by artillery and not by tanks. They were attacked by the German Air Force. I don't know how many people died uh, during the evacuation, but many, many people were saved. And the main, the main part of the British Army, I mean, 250,000 British soldiers managed to get away, and I think 50,000 French managed to get away. That is a significant amount of trained soldiers. These, by the way, were the professional soldiers, you know? And they all kind of lined up on the beach and didn't complain. They just stood and waiting for the next guys, because the next guy's life is just as important as you. All class differences disappeared during that day, you know? And it kind of shows a way a way for the future when Britain is, is free from the scourge of its class system, you know? The class system is a definitely a part of British culture, less so in Ireland. It's definitely, not, it's definitely not a case in Ireland. You know, basically everybody's middle class in Ireland. Everyone goes to university and has a good life. But the class system in England is based on historical forces like feudalism, okay? So, we managed to get away. Miraculously, it's called the miracle of Dunkirk. Okay? So Dunkirk's is part here. And they managed to get away. At this point, the British have got no money. <laughs> they are bankrupt. And it wasn't for the Americans under FDI, it wasn't for them, the British surely would have fallen to the Nazis easily because they were running out of petrol, they were running out of armaments. But um, FDI said, look, we're going to work out a deal, we're going to give you what you need in order to fight this war against this terrible political evil called German Nazis, Nazi fascism, which is beyond, beyond my ability to... Uh, to convey how evil it was. I mean, these guys were beyond evil. We can do another class on that another time. Obviously, it resulted in the Holocaust, six million Jews, 20 million Russians, and three million dissidents in death camps. Okay? 20 million Russians were killed when the, 
the Nazis attacked Soviet Russia and tried to eradicate the, uh, the indigenous Slavic population. Can you believe that? I can't believe it either, but it happened, okay? So the truth is actually stranger than fiction. Mm. Quite depressing when you first hear about it. But. Okay, so this is the evacuation of Dunkirk. At this point, we are on our knees, but Churchill then rallies the nation. We're down on our knees. Are we, are we beat? No, never. We will never surrender. <laughs> And God gives some love to Churchill for saying that. You know, he gave this brilliant speech. He says, we will fight them on the beaches, we'll fight them in the hills, we'll fight them in the streets, and we'll never surrender. And they would never surrender as well. Never. Well done, Britain. Good job. So they redeem themselves after hundreds of years of colonial oppression. Even this day, they redeem themselves. They redeem their name, they redeem their posterity. Well done. There's an Irish guy talking to you, right? Now what happens is called the Battle of Britain. The Germans are about to invade uh, southern England. How do they do it? You need to get air superiority first. Basically, you've got two equally matched air forces ready to fight each other. Two, if you can put it into a boxing match analogy, you've got, you've got Merry, Merry, Merry Weatherfield, is that right? That, that African-American guy who's built like a brick crap house, yeah. and Conor McGregor. It's like two great fighters having a go at each other. And the war... The, bat, for, the war for um, the Germans are trying to get air supremacy over the south of England here. Look, these are the area bases, and this is the La this is the Nazi air force. It's called the Luftwaffe, but I don't want to get too cosy with the Germans, right? And they're attacking them. Why didn't they win? Well, they, they're very close to winning. We're in two weeks away from destroying the RAF's ability. All these bases were being knocked out. All these bases. The, the radar, which was giving... Yeah, the British forewarning of the attack. Mm. They were being knocked out as well, and slowly but surely we were getting destroyed in our ability. So eventually they would have had the ability to attack London with impunity. Okay? And then the leader of the German Air Force says, if the British ever attack Berlin during the day, I'm a fat Dutchman. And he goes, let's do it. So they sent eight bombers over there. Suicide attack. I think I've... I've, I've of the crew that survived, I think only eight survived out of 40 guys. So those 40 guys turned the course of the war, okay? By bombing Berlin during the day, the leader of the German Air Force says, Rah! okay, so he starts to attack London and he moves strategically away from bombing the RAF on the ground to attacking London. And this is called the Blitz. Okay, so now they can rebuild these stations and still maintain air superiority. So they're holding them off, they're holding them off, and they're almost dying, and then they hit them in Berlin, and then they cha the Germans change strategic direction. That's what loses it for them, really. Also, they've got radar. Also, the, the military technology is basically equal, but the Messerschmitt 109 is more, it's faster in the air, it climbs faster, it's, made, it's got a Mercedes engine. This has got a Rolls-Royce engine. They're both kind of really super tech stuff, you know? This has got 15 seconds of fire, which means you pull, press the trigger for 15 seconds, mm. then you run out of bullets. But these guys have got 20 seconds of similar firepower, and they've also got 20 high-explosive grenades, which what that means is it fires the grenade near you, and it blows up near the plane, and that's what brings the plane down. But remember... The British are fighting a defensive war, so they've got a spiritual advantage. They're defending their country. And the Germans don't really know why they're doing it. They just kind of like, they must destroy the enemy, whoever the enemy is. They're just robots, but they don't really know why they're attacking. Mm. So they haven't got that moral sort of power behind them. Also, the Germans, they've only got like 30 minutes over England, southern England, before they run out of fuel and have to get back. So that limits their operational ability to inflict damage. Whereas the British, they can just go down quick, get down. And guys who are fighting for the Battle of Britain, these are called the few. After a, after a speech by Churchill. And these guys, maybe literally 2,000 people saved Britain from invasion. Never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed to so many. By <laughs> so few. It's such a great speech. It still gets me, you know. So basically, that's it. They managed to hold the Nazis off, and they win the Battle of Britain. Um, 
the the the, the window of opportunity for um, for invasion passes, and then the the, the 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 kind of play in a way, the theatre of war moves on, and Hitler turns his evil atten his evil attentions and his intentions towards the east in a way to eradicate the uh, Jewish populations of Russia and Poland by invading them, which is what really brings him down in the end, because he loses a massive battle at Stalingrad. He loses 250,000 troops at Stalingrad when the Soviet general Zhukov pincer movements him and cuts off his supply lines and captures 250,000 Germans. Of those 250,000 Germans at Stalingrad, 95% were killed by the Soviets, okay? So, the East is just marked by brutality and hatred and evil, okay? But the, the Nazi Germans, they started it and they need to realise that, okay? Right, this is a quick overview of a turning point in the Second World War. I hope you liked it. I'm sorry for crying. See you later. <laughs>